By now you know that heat therapy is really good for your heart and reducing the risk of all-cause mortality. Data from Finland finds that people who sauna at least four days per week have a reduction of cardiovascular specific mortality by 63% and a reduction in all-cause mortality by some 40%. But which modality or which form of heat is most time efficient and most effective? In today's show, we're going to help explain that and break that down. What you have here is just the sun, for example, going outside, sweating in the sun, getting hot in your car. Then we have a sauna blanket. We have an infrared sauna. And on the end here, we have, and admittedly I'm biased here, I have a classic Finnish sauna which I used after years of doing an electric sauna and an infrared sauna, and I'll share with you the details here. But I wanted to break this down and the minimum effective dose. You wanna aim for four sessions per week uh, for between 15 and 20 minutes. And this is, again, accord according to the Kyopu ischemic heart disease cohort that has been studied since 1984 by Yari Laukaman over in Finland. Again, finding that going in the sauna, a Finnish sauna, four sessions per week for between 15 and 20 minutes has been shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular specific mortality, specifically sudden cardiac death by 63%, also reducing the risk of all-cause mortality by 40%. So you wanna get into sauna therapy. There's a lot of health benefits here, improving cardiovascular function, improving nitric oxide release, possibly improving erectile function, erectile quality, uh, decreasing blood pressure by six millimeters of mercury uh, in the systolic di uh, blood pressure, systolic blood pressure. So uh, let's say you're short on time. What is going to be the most effective way to get these health benefits. Well, obviously the classic Finnish sauna with a wood-fired stove, but that can be hard to access and can be a little bit more expensive. So what are some options? Well, this is where your personal preference and location where you live and what your access will help you dictate. What you could do is honestly, this sounds crazy, but I think there's benefits here sitting in your car on a hot day. I know in Texas, I was just in Omaha, Nebraska. I was in Phoenix recently. It can get up to 110, 120 degrees. So if you don't have access to any of these other types of sauna, I would recommend taking your car, parking it somewhere, and getting really hot in the car and starting to sweat, and then go taking a walk and maybe doing that again at night. It can help calm you down, it can move blood flow. What you really wanna do is get hot. So what is happening is blood is being diverted away from your core to the periphery of your skin, and in so doing, you're exercising your venous and arterial system, improving nitric oxide, decreasing uh, what's known as arterial resistance and also improving uh, the stiffness of your vessels, which has been shown to be reduced whether you go in a sauna, whether you go in an electric sauna or a classic Finnish sauna. So this is going to be the minimum effective dose, just getting hot in the sun. Of course, the sun has other health benefits, possibly improving testosterone, sexual uh, vigor. There's a study in 2022 that found that people who go out in the sun or have higher sexual feelings, uh, increasing testosterone and all that. And actually scientists are now studying uh, the perennial bathing where people are going out in the sun and exposing their genitals. This is actually being investigated by researchers, which is really cool. Now let's say you have just a thousand dollars to invest in say a sauna. Well. Would you wanna go for an infrared sauna or a sauna blanket? It really depends on the space that you have in your living situation. If you live with a roommate or you travel a lot, you have a minimalist lifestyle, you might wanna start with a sauna blanket. Surprisingly, these can get quite hot. We have one from Bond Charge. It gets up to 177 degrees. You will be dripping in sweat after utilizing this. I've talked with many people, I present on this, uh, these types of topics. I've had people come up to me when they first start going in the sauna blankets, they don't sweat at all. They're not heat acclimated. After several months of continued use, three to four sessions per week, they are dripping in sweat. One particular lady came up to me and said, it looks like I got out of a swimming pool after I go into my sauna blanket for just 15 minutes. So sauna blankets are a great entry point to learn how to train your body to become heat acclimated. Again, what happens with heat acclimation, reduced arterial stiffness, improved arterial compliance, reduced blood viscosity, possibly improving uh, erectile quality and function, which is great. Now, if you have between $1,000 and $3,000, you can invest in an infrared sauna. I use this for years. We've got one from High Tech Health back in 2016. Utilize that all the way up to 2020. We sold that to a friend. They are still using that today. This thing is a workhorse. The High Tech Health Infrared Sauna, I'll put links below, great company. You can get free shipping by mentioning High Intensity Health. 
this gets up to 165 degrees. Now, if you go in with a friend or a partner, you get the two person one, you can get it cranking up to 170 degrees, which is really nice. Now, again, the time efficiency with an infrared sauna is not the same as a finished sauna. You're going to have to get in there for 30 to 40 minutes. So you can play an audiobook through the speaker system. You can listen to a podcast, maybe watch high intensity health, whatever it is. Uh, that can be a benefit of the infrared sauna is you're learning as you're getting hot. So you want to be time efficient there while you're you're getting hot. So infrared sauna is not magic. Now it does penetrate potentially deeper into your tissues, but it's at a lower heat level compared to the finished sauna. So there could be benefits there. Maybe people, if you're a little bit more sensitive to heat, you're new to this, this is a great launching place to see if you can make this a habit. Moving on to what's known as the electric sauna. This might be a barrel sauna. This might be a sauna at your gym and so forth. The only downside to gym saunas is sometimes people come in there with their shoes on, they have cologne, they have you know, deodorant that smells and things like that. But if you can find a really good gym that has a clean sauna that's, that's well-maintained and deters people from going in with cell phones and, and perfumes and all that, that's another great place to start. Uh, those get up to between 180 degrees and 190 degrees. The downside of both the infrared and the electric sauna is that as it gets over 200 degrees, the electronic components in these uh, particular sauna units can start to melt. So there's a finite increase in the temperature, kind of caps out at 190 degrees. Again, which is why I think for time efficiency, uh, one of the best sources of heat is a wood fired stove because nothing's gonna melt. You have a stainless, you have a real nice steel firebox. It can get really hot. And this has been quite amazing. So if you can find a sauna center, you can build one in your backyard. We made a video all about how to do that and so forth. If you're interested in that, check out the website saunatimes.com. Glenn, uh, Glenn Arba is a great uh, individual. He has a bunch of resources for do-it-yourselfers if you wanna learn how to do this or tell a contractor how to build this for you. So with the finished sauna, you can either have it dry heat or wet heat. And what do I mean by that? Well, if it's dry, you're not pouring water on the rocks. But when it's wet heat, you're pouring water on the, the rocks that are on top of the sauna stove. And that actually increases the humidity and causes you to sweat more. It increases your internal temperature, causes more blood flow to be diverted from your core to the periphery of your skin, which is good for detoxifying potentially heavy metals, persistent organic pollutants and plastics and the things that are in your tap water that are in your clothing and also in your food. So you wanna get rid of that stuff because we know it's problematic for your health. And so this is why the finish sauna, in my opinion, is one of the better ways to go. Uh, but not everyone has access to this. Uh, it can be a little bit more expensive. If you live in an apartment or you're traveling, you're in the military, it might be hard to do. So you can maybe start here and have that as the ultimate goal. I will tell you that for a long time, I didn't have the resources, didn't have the space. I found a part of my backyard. This was in, I wanna say it was 2016, and I put some cinder blocks. And I literally said, one day, I took a picture, I said, one day I will build a sauna there. It took me five years to, I had the resources and the wherewithal and develop the knowledge to be able to build a sauna like this. So I do believe in manifestation, the law of attraction. So if this is something you wanna do, go put a brick in your backyard and just put sauna. You know, your spouse might think you're totally crazy, but in a few years you might have the resources and the time and the knowledge to be able to build something like that. But I also wanna put right here hot tub. And so we know that um, going in the hot tub has a lot of health benefits. It probably is linked somewhere uh, in here, the hot tub. We know that hot tub sessions have been shown to improve vascular uh, tone and temperature and also blood sugar levels in people with diabetes. We talked about this study from the New England Journal of Medicine in the late 1990s found that people who are insulin dependent type two diabetics, when they just go in the hot tub three to four days per week, they have uh, better improvements in their long-term blood sugar regulation and require less insulin. And so any heat is better than no heat at all. And that's why as crazy as it might sound, sitting in your car in the hot sun, getting a sweat on is better than, than nothing whatsoever. So we know that heat is beneficial. Uh, getting heat adapted leads to these beneficial changes in your cardiovascular system. And if you pair heat therapy with exercise and nutrition changes, there are additive and synergistic benefits. One study in elderly uh, Japanese individuals in their 60s found when they randomized people to either change their diet, nutrition, and exercise, or just go in the hot tub, or go in the hot tub and change their diet, nutrition, and exercise, they had the greatest improvements in body composition, blood sugar health, cardiometabolic health. 
So if you're already doing diet changes and exercise, it behooves you to start focusing on heat therapy because these are synergistic benefits that we really can't ignore. Large cohort studies, like the Cupio study uh, ongoing since 1984 in Finland and much more show that people who get hot on purpose have improved outcomes on the cardiovascular side, on the lung side, even outcomes with COVID-19, for example, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, may even affect bone health. I mean, there's so many benefits, including mental health. You will notice that if you start to read in the sauna, you will actually visually remember the things that you were reading. It's really important. That might have to do with all the different uh, peptides and, and uh, endorphins that are released from the heat. So very beneficial. Now you might say, when should I go in the sauna? Should I go in the sauna then exercise? Well, most of the studies find, and I think anecdotal reports from people find that if they exercise, then go in the sauna, that might be more beneficial. You're moving blood around after you go in the sauna that might help with recovery, potentially with hypertrophy and moving uh, blood flow and so forth uh, uh, to the muscles that you just worked on uh, during your exercise session. So try to do your resistance training or cardiovascular training, then go in the sauna. One study found that when they have trained cyclists do their cycling, then go immediately into the sauna, they have an improvement in blood volume and blood flow and a reduction in blood pressure, which is all favorable. So uh, when it comes to the types, again, it's just a matter of cost, access, and time. Uh, if it doesn't get as hot as an infrared, or sorry, a finished sauna, you're gonna have to spend more time uh, in the sauna blanket. You could watch a movie, watch a documentary, listen to a podcast, uh, all of which are beneficial, and you wanna start somewhere. Again, some heat is better than no heat at all. So. Hopefully you found this a little bit helpful to contextualize how to start incorporating heat therapy into your nutrition and lifestyle practices. We know that the gold standard should be the finished sauna. Uh, it gets up to 100, I'm sorry, 220 degrees. And then you add in the water on the rocks and the relative humidity. I mean, most people that I bring in there, we do a podcast and we go in the sauna, can barely last five minutes. It gets so hot. Sometimes you have to cover your eyes and your nose. And in so doing, you're creating that stress, that short-term hormetic stress that can enable you to become better heat acclimated. And it's a great exercise for your venous system, for your arterial system, uh, improving uh, arterial stiffness, decreasing that, improving vascular resistance, uh, possibly heart rate variability, the list goes on. So there's a lot of benefits here, especially metabolic health benefits as well. So hot tub is great, sauna blanket is great, infrared sauna, it just depends upon where you're at. So start somewhere and then you can work up over time to these uh, different types of modalities and eventually maybe access a classic finished sauna because that's where the research is coming from. People that are using wood-fired stoves, doing this three to four days per week in Finland. Again, the uh, Cupio uh, cohort, has been studied since 1984, major outcomes there, reduction in dementia, Alzheimer's prevalence, uh, sudden cardiac death by 63%, uh, all-cause mortality by 40%. If this was a drug, it'd be all over the news. You would hear all about it. So I think it's time that we make saunas great again. This is a, a thing that people in Eastern Europe and the Nordic regions have been doing for a long time. We know generally they're healthier than here uh, in North America. So let's start to emulate some of these lifestyle practices that other cultures are benefiting from and bring them here into North America. So friends, hopefully you found this helpful. Definitely check out High Tech health. Uh, they make an amazing infrared sauna. We, the folks over at Bond Charge, they make a great sauna blanket. It gets up to 107 degrees, which is just phenomenal. I'll put all those links in the description below. Appreciate you tuning in. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button, share this with a friend, and I look forward to hearing from you in the comment section below.